Well, I'm Tina Kapoor. We met briefly at orientation those a long time ago, so I, you, know, you guys probably don't remember. My, uh, I'm going to be teaching the next, the remaining three or four lectures in probability. And uh, my background, I don't know if I told you guys at um, orientation time, but my background is I got my PhD from MIT, from the Artificial Intelligence Lab, which uh, I don't know if you guys have had a chance. We, we have a lot of AI lab alums here, right? Like Raj has been here, Philip has been here. Has anyone taken you over to the AI lab to visit? Uh, okay, well, maybe we can do it. I'm sorry? Oh, that's right, Patrick. You know, I, I have to figure out what exactly the politics are of MIT and Ars Digita, but... Uh, it's a tricky thing. Is it tricky? Well, maybe I can... It seems to be more the, pil the politics of Philip okay. than MIT. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Philip is fantastic and everybody should just leave their politics out. But uh, we'll take... You know, I'm getting taped, so I have to think about what am I saying here, so we'll... Uh, he charges for edits. Do you want to cut it out? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right. Um, yeah, well, maybe we'll wander out towards uh, the end of the week, the end of next week, yeah. and take a tour there. And you know, you can all pretend to be visiting high school students, and we have perspective. So we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> We're very delayed. There you go. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. They have summer. You know, we have summer programs there. But um, so. Background to the work. What I, you know, what I've done is structured the rest of this class so I get to teach you about stuff I love to do, and um, unlike a lot of my peers, I really still love to do the work that I did for my PhD. In fact, um, but that's what my job is in as well. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that um, right at the start, so you'll see that what exactly are we getting into. My biggest goal for you guys for this, for the three four lecture period we have, is to be able to use probability to solve a problem that is currently a state-of-the-art problem. The solution we're going to go over here you know, is not a state-of-the-art, but it'll help you build things that are state-of-the-art. And, um, and these solutions are important enough that um, the FDA actually has made a code for it, and they pay for it. So this is in the field of medical um, image processing, but I'm going to show you it's an important enough problem. It's a real-world enough problem that people pay for it. And uh, so, <laughs> there you go. They don't pay a whole lot, but you know it adds up after a hundred or so patients. Okay, and ju just to reiterate that what we're going to do is write a software solution. I'm going to present a problem to you in image-guided surgery, which is what my background is, and uh, then we're going to write we're going to write some MATLAB software to solve a, a, a very chunky portion of the main problem. Which I hope that if down the road, if you guys ever do get interested in image-guided surgery, you will you will know you know, where to get started in a principled manner and be able to whip out the L. Drake book, which you guys don't have a copy of, I understand. The first two chapters. Yeah. I know, that, that is such a wonderful book. It's out of print. It is, yeah, I do. Um, I guess since Al stopped teaching it, uh, they've, it's gone out of print, but it was, um, I can always, I took the course when he was teaching. It was one of the last, one of the last terms he taught. He kept telling us he was going to retire, but uh, he kept teaching it. and. Um, so I can always hear his voice ringing. He was just the most fantastic professor, and I, you know, I'm not even going to try to do anything like what he did. Um, and uh, but I do want to point out one thing. Let me ask you one question here. Anyone know what image-guided surgery is? Do we have some medical docs in this class? <laughs> okay, you don't necessarily. All right. Because I, I remember there were at least three when we started out. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's. You're really just talking about uh, a representation, and maybe some robotics or no. There, you know, it's very, very interesting. I just had a conversation yesterday with a startup that's coming out of um, Johns Hopkins, which is going to be the first one after Robodoc to actually attach some some actuation. Robotics is not a word that's used very much in medicine now because people are a little afraid of it. So a euphemism is actuation, <laughs> and that's what. Um, but I. But that's much more at the cutting edge of you know things that are only borderline acceptable. Actually, putting a robot at the end of the system. But image-guided surgery, as it's it's accepted today. Five years ago, it was a brand new technology. Brand new technology. The way it's used today is. Um, that a, an image-guided surgery system is it's a contraption which has some software and some hardware. The hardware is typically a workstation, and there are these things called sensors. 
and they're just attachments you put the surgeon puts on their tools and the idea is that you know the, here's a neurosurgeon they've opened up someone's head or in fact they're trying to figure out where to open up the patient's head they've got what they'll do is they'll attach some you know gizmos to the patient and then using those as they're tracing out an outline to figure out where they're going to do the craniotomy because if if you guys are at all familiar with neurosurgery the you know the surgeon takes a preoperative MR or a CT scan looks at that and says okay the tumor is in the left parietal lobe or it's in the frontal lobe then they have to figure out where exactly should I make an incision so that I can get to the tumor and resect it with as small a hole in the head as possible many reasons you know not just the fact that you don't want to make a big hole in someone's head but just the risk of infection goes up the healing time goes up and you know and you the bigger the hole the more time you spend making it and taking care of the patient and insurance companies don't like it aside from all patient discomfort there's a big <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what what these image guided surgery systems are used for a lot is to once the patient is brought into the OR they're lying on the table the surgeon goes around and you know draws on where they think the craniotomy should be and what an image guided surgery system provides them is that as they're drawing they're tracing a, a line around you know where they think the tumor is on the monitor they can see where that lies on a preoperative MR scan of the patient and I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview here of just look at the image on the right okay this is the sort of image that an image guided surgery system will generate can you guys see that I know the contrast on the left is poor but let's just focus on the image on the right so as the patient is lying on the table there will uh, the surgeon can see an image like this on a monitor and more importantly not just the image but as they move their tools you know these tools have been outfitted with these sensors so they know where the tool tip is and as they're tracing a boundary so as I'm just gonna point out right here that if you know a patient is lying on the table and they're they physically go in and draw a line for you know a circle for where they're gonna make the cut right as they're tracing that line they're gonna be able to see the line on their display that's gonna show them what, how it relates relative to the mass that they want to resect okay now this is you would, you know, I've been doing this for now, let's say the last 10 years, seven of which I was doing my PhD, and um, the last three I've actually been practicing it at a small company. But I had started to take the concept of image-guided surgery for granted until um, about a week ago, or two weeks ago, I was in Montreal, and uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Canadian healthcare system, but there's not a whole lot of money in there, so people can't buy these image-guided surgery systems. Just background, these, these systems cost, you know, somewhere between 100,000, 500,000 U.S. dollars. So only a very small number of U.S. hospitals can barely begin to afford these, right? So in Canada, they don't, they don't have any of these. So I went into a case because there's a doctor there. It's one of the trailblazers, neurosurgeon, Dr. Gerard Moore. He, um, he showed me a case of how they conventionally do these craniotomies right now without an image-guided surgery system and repeatedly repeatedly what happens is that they will make a, a hole in the head and then when they open up look at the brain they'll start to see as they use ultrasound and other modalities to figure out whether the the mass is tumorous or not they'll figure out they'll see that um, the tumor actually far extends the boundary of the hole that they've made simply because it is not that easy to eyeball this problem you know you have because typically with a, if you did not have an image guided surgery system all you would have is a pre-op MR which would be on a light board over there the surgeon is over here you know you have slices of the MR scan which looks something like um, the image on the left and uh, if you see I'm just scrolling through slices of an MR scan you can see the nose is to the left back of the head is to the right this is a uh, this is a particular acquisition known as gradient echo acquisition in MR images and um, the the main point for you guys to you know the reason I put it up there is that even though you can see it as sort of a three-dimensional image here what the surgeons a typical conventional surgeon has available to him is and they're all him so there's like one woman neurosurgeon I met but um, they they'll just have these slices printed on film on a light board and they when the patient is lying down here they just have to mentally reconstruct those images in their head 
and figure out, okay, now 